this is Miff, your life and performance coach, and welcome to the Actually You Can podcast. Actually You Can is more than just a fun phrase to say. It's a philosophy of limitless potential, a mindset, an attitude, a conviction. Most importantly, it's about to make you achieve what you might never have thought possible. On this show, we discuss strategies for growth for ambitious individuals looking to achieve big things and live a thriving, fulfilled life. You'll hear from inspiring guests who will share their journeys, challenges, and lessons learned. And I'll be sharing insights and actionable takeaways from my Aligned Results Framework that will help you to align your goals, mindset, and strategies to reach your highest potential. Be sure to hit subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to so you can easily find this podcast again and stay updated with new episodes dropping every week. This week, I had the pleasure of speaking with Carlo, aka The Kingmaker. Carlo's expertise lies in coaching high performers in business, elite athletes, and coaches to become the best versions of themselves in all areas of life. In this episode, Carlo shares the process he takes his clients through to transform them into kings and queens. If you're someone who wants to learn how they can have complete power over every aspect of their life, or who wants to learn how to live life on their terms and become your king or queen self, then this one's for you. Let's jump in. Hi, Carlo. Welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you on here today. Miff, thank you so much for having me. Super excited for this. Uh, and uh, hello to all the listeners listening in. And we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects of all time, transformation, and more specifically, your unique approach to this. I'm super excited to learn more and for the listeners to learn more about that. But to kick us off, I'm curious, why do people call you the kingmaker? Yeah, it's, um, see, it's, uh, I find that a lot of people in the coaching space, there's the, you know, there's coaches and there's coaches and there's every now and again, there's that one person that comes into your corner that you know, helps you transform every single part of you. And a kingmaker is different from, from a coach. A lot of people ask me like, well, what is a kingmaker? Right. And it's really that person that is in your corner, like a, like a trainer for a boxer that doesn't take any of the limelight, but helps you to uh, sit on the throne of your life and, and lift the trophies of, of your own life. And so I really help people, uh, with, everything, every part of life, all the meaningful parts of life, whether it's money, whether it's business, relationships, health, whatever it might be to that individual people, uh, men and women, because then people come in and say, oh, you just work with men. No, uh, I, uh, as 75% of my audience is, um, is actually women, which is crazy if you ask me, but, um, it's, it's really whatever, whatever people need to succeed and to get out of their own way, become the ultimate and the highest quality version of themselves so that they can win at whatever domain that they're in, whether it be sport, business, life, uh, you name it. Amazing. And what has sparked your journey along this path? I'm assuming you didn't wake up and all of a sudden you're like, I'm a kingmaker. I'm assuming there's a story behind all this. Tell us more. Yeah, so my my story around this actually... um, began when so i grew up in italy uh, i was uh, i was 14 when i moved to australia but as a, as a young kid i was uh, i never say small because i was never small i grew up in italy loving food and and sport and i was never little right um so the i suppose after moving here it was 18 after in victoria it's vce and you know you probably know what it's like right you finish year 12 and you think man i need to have my whole life figured it out and I did not. So uh, we we traveled back to to um, to Italy to my hometown for the first time after five years or whatever it was. And uh, as I was watching, uh, in a in a totally non creepy way, kids training at the soccer pitch that I that I basically grew up on. Uh, Sounds a bit creepy, but it, yes, I, that's why I said it. I said <laughs> okay. it in a non creepy. I disclaimed that. Okay, you can't use that against me now. Uh, uh, but I was watching them train and all the memories flooded back of not only what that place in particular did for me, what that environment, but also all the stuff about childhood that I stopped, that I didn't really think about for so many years. And, and so basically it came back and came back home to Melbourne at the time. And 
I was like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to use my life to help people become the best version of themselves. Uh, and I'm going to use sport. So for the next 10 years, I, uh, basically dove into the world of business and I was struggling financially for all that time, uh, which is one of the reasons why I love doing what I do now around money. But it was always about helping people to become the highest version of themselves, the, the absolute best that they could be. And then helping coaches on the other hand as well, uh, becoming the best coaches they can be so they can impact more people. And so through, through that time, I, as I mentioned, I struggled financially in massive ways for so long, but in that process, which I'm really grateful for, it really helped me create the identities of the person that, that I am today and helped me learn business, marketing, sales, people, human behavior, mindset, all of those things. And then as time went on, it's, you know, I think if there's anyone in coaching here might, might relate to this where you, you're doing something, but you get that feeling that, hey, there's something more. There's something more that we want to do. And, and we, there's that frustration, healthy frustration, I believe. And that was for me. And that was the case. And I thought, you know what, there's more that I want to do. And I want to go to a different level, higher level. And so I uh, sort of winded that business down and moved into mindset for business owners, which I never thought I would ever do, and elite athletes. And, and, and here we are today. And it's, it's a bit of a crazy journey because I'm, I'm very much about uh, working with people and th they have a passion for what they do because I think that's a whole game changer. It's not just for the money. And although I talk a lot about the importance of money, but it's about fulfilling a purpose that you have and money is really important to that. And when we are following a passion, it is almost an, a duty that we have to become everything that we can be. Because otherwise, we can't fulfill the passion that we're having, whatever that might be. Mm. I love what you said about passion. And I, I've been toying a lot with purpose. I mean, at the time of recording, we're coming towards the end of the year. A lot of people use this as a time for reflection, ask themselves, like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah. That sort of jam. Yeah. And I've been toying with the idea recently of our one purpose is to discover what our passions are mm. and go after that. Mm. What would you say to that? Completely agree. And I think the way I believe from everything I've seen, I could be completely wrong. Um, from what I've seen, first of all, it's not a question of, do I have a purpose? That's not even a question. It, you do have a purpose. It's just, okay, how do we, how do we find that? How can we, how, how can we discover what that might be? And maybe there's multiple, there's I wouldn't be shocked if there's a few different things. Life is this growth eccentric experience that it's meant to be, you know, going after the, the, the next thing in, in, a, in a grateful and full way, in abundant way. For me, I can't, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know for everyone what has worked for me and what has worked for, I'm lucky to work with thousands of people in these 15 years. I found my answer in my journey. I found my answer in, in, in my story. There's, there's, a, there's a quote that I live by and it's I'm not a big quote guy. Okay. I'm really not. So when I say it's a Steve Jobs quote, it just happens to be what he said. And I'm like, oh, that, that really uh, resonates. Uh, and what he said was uh, that you don't connect the dots looking forwards. You connect the dots looking backwards. And Sometimes what I find a lot of people tend to do is they try to connect the dots looking ahead. Oh, what is my purpose? And it's almost like, you know, they're, they're metaphorically looking ahead in front of them, trying to find an answer out there in front of them in the distant future. What has worked for me is really looking backwards and connecting the dots. The dots for me was, uh, you know, my home environment when I grew up, uh, well, it was, the insecurities around, around my body. I was the overweight kid that, you know, was the last one picked for PE games. And I was, I know what it's like to be the kid that it doesn't get invited to, 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 to events and to not be the popular one, to be the one that, you know, has got little primary school crushes, but you know that you, you're, you're not a chance because you, you're not the confident one, the popular one. And at the same time, I know what it's like to be, the business owner that is, that is really passionate about wanting to make an impact, making a change, wanting, being really great at what you do, right? 
but struggling financially. And those are, those are the things that when, when I look at my purpose, that's what has really helped me. And it doesn't have to be the same for everyone. Then you could say, is there a bigger purpose to that? Probably. For me, one of my highest purposes is to become the absolute highest quality version of me. Because I feel like if I keep doing that, then it takes care of the, the other two, right? And it impacts the world around me because, I mean, we could talk about leadership around that and in the way that we lead the people that, you know, we care about and the ones around us, our communities, families, ourselves at all. It's all because of our ability to lead ourselves and take us to to that next level. So uh, I have been known and have a tendency for long-winded answers. So I'm just going to gonna let you in on your own show. Welcome, Miff. I love this. The, my favorite guests are the ones that go on tangents. And I, I sit here and um, people who are listening to this might not be able to see me, but I sit here with a notepad and pen and I'm, I'm constantly just writing everything yes. down to make sure I can come back to it. So I'd love to draw you back Do real it. quick. Yeah. You mentioned connecting the dots back helps people to discover their purpose. And I'm so glad you referenced that quote because I often reference it, but butcher it. So thanks for doing my job for me. I would be interested to hear your thoughts. For what reasons do you think we disconnect from our path? Because it sounds like that's essentially what we do. We're so focused on looking forward that we just choose to ignore the path that we have been on. What reasons do that's you think a really that happens? That's a good question. Do you know what? I've done a lot of shows. No one has asked that question. I think it's a great question. And the reason is I think it comes down from this, and, and I, I talk a lot about programming, so uh, subconscious program, and I find that so many people, and I'm going to tie it into the money because everyone's going to think that I mean about money, and, and it's connected. Well, it has an impact around money, but it's, it's connected in the sense that we're in, in this constant search for what we don't have. We're in this constant state of lack and scarcity because we don't see what we actually do have already in us. And so sometimes I talk about the, uh, the concept that life is an inside out process. What do I mean by that? I mean that instead of looking for the answers outside of you, answers are already inside of you, right? Everything that we, are, that, that we need is inside of us. Now, I'm not saying, hey, you already have everything that you need. It's inside of you. You don't need to do or learn anything else. No, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that the actual things that you need that money can't buy is already inside of you. And everything that has led, everything that has led you to this moment has led you to this moment for a particular reason, right? If you choose to see it, okay? If you choose to believe, I, I use the for me mindset, right? That everything happens for me not to me. And so if everything happens for me, then everything I've been through has led me to this moment so that it can be cards that I can play in life. But we have been conditioned by society to believe that we're not enough, that we don't have enough, that it's never enough. And so we keep chasing, you know, a body is, is never enough. We need to have, you know, the, the six pack, the ass, the, you know, the, the, the lips, the whatever it might be for people, right? For guys, it's the same. He, he never long enough, strong enough, big enough, whatever it might be, right? And and the, there's this conditioning of lack that is goes, as I said, beyond money. But if we just take a moment and actually look back and go like, holy shit, like everything that I've been through has happened for me. If it ha has happened for me, why? And how can I use that? And maybe the answers that I've been looking for outside of me, actually, what if they've been in me the whole time and I am the answer? Mm -hmm. I think that begins to completely shift the whole way that we look at the world and the way that we look mm -hmm. at ourselves. All of a sudden, we start to look at ourselves in a completely different way. Our self-esteem goes up, our self-work. All of a sudden, holy shit, could I be enough? And it's just a matter of tapping into that and see, you know, Becoming the king version of yourself requires you to have this foundation because otherwise you become a follower, you become a sheep that it, it, it always wants to be something, someone else. Mm. You've put that so eloquently as well. Like it is a big question that I've just thrown at you it's and great. I asked it because I'm curious as well, right? It's something that um, I'm keen to explore and 
I love how you've mentioned that life is an inside out process yeah. and the fact that it's it's almost our conditioning that stops us from desiring to look back. And if we look at our time in school, you know, progress year by year, we got to get good grades. And to your point, you know, I finished school, what do I need to do with my life? It's, I have to pick one thing that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And that, you know, we could spend ages talking about how flawed that yeah. is. And then when that leads to purpose and I, I, I have a similar belief that I think we can have multiple purposes depending on what chapter of our life yeah. um, we're in as well. And so I'm interested to hear, it sounds like when you made that trip back to Italy, that was a transformative moment for you. What transformation happened from there onwards for you specifically? What identity were you in and what identity did you evolve into through that transformation? How long do we have? Uh, it, oh, my God. I, I mean, we're talking about some almost 15 years ago right and so it it was very much a light bulb moment for me I, i'm a i'm a quite spiritual guy um i won't dive in too much into that but it, it's a massive part of of who i am right and that i mean that's had its own crazy transformations if we go back to i mean i was a i was an 18 year old kid that learned english as a second language had no idea about business and i mean none had no qualification in education, business, anything to do what I was doing. And all of a sudden, I remember my dad uh, registered my business name and, and I got that paper and I thought, awesome, here we go. People are going to fly, start rolling in, going to make a bunch of money. This is going to be brilliant. It was a complete opposite, right? It took me 18 months to, to get my first sale myth. And my first sale was... A, a single session for a kid to to learn soccer and confidence, and I charge him six bucks, right? And so when I look back now, at you know just that transformation alone has just been insane. But see, let, maybe I'll cover the areas. The first area was very much the uh, this, and I believe that whatever whatever external business life issue we have. It's not an external issue. It's an internal issue. Meaning for that 18 year old kid to only charge six bucks, it's less about his ability. It's more about the internal uh, belief system that he has. So there was a, there was a money mindset issue that had to be transformed, which is so closely connected, if not entirely connected to a self-worth issue, self-confidence issue, self-esteem right? And then we're talking self-discipline. We're talking about even, even being the kind of person that, and I could talk about all those at length for forever, so I won't do that. But even, even the ability to, to believe in yourself, to see yourself as being valuable, anyone in, in, in a business that they run themselves and it's their business, especially coaches. I say to people all the time, listen, it's easy selling, making a lot of money working for someone else selling someone else's thing as soon as it's your name to the to the thing and you're selling yourself now we really see where our confidence is my blessing was that i failed massively for a very long time when i was very young so that i was able to develop that literally in the trenches like in marketing there's a term called guerrilla marketing which is like really like down in the in the jungle marketing that's how i freaking did 10 years of my life Gorilla business, right? Which is a blessing because now in this age, the skills that I can bring to, you know, multi million dollar companies, I'm like, hey, let's do some of that stuff. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And to me, I'm like, well, yeah, it's, it's just super basic, but it works. So there's been a massive transformation personally um, into the identity. So going from insecure lacking confidence, full of doubt, full of, um, you know, lack mentality to in, towards something that is becoming more and more abundant and as time goes on. That's the internal stuff that is allowed for the external results that I've been able to experience and in, in, in hand help other people create that for themselves too. And again, you're, you're talking about internal. Yeah. It's not like you went external to go find all these things. And I think that's an automatic reaction for a lot of people. If something's not working for you, okay, what can I do? I, I, 
use the example of energy a lot of the time. If, oh, I'm feeling low on energy, what coffee can I mm. drink? What energy drink can I reach for? What food can right. I reach for to help me feel energized? Yes. And it's like, hang on a minute. It all starts from within. Yes. And so I love your approach to that. Yeah. And so I'm interested here through all of that experience, what does transformation look like in your world now? I mean, you have your own signature method, the, the king and queen self method. Yep. How do you use all that knowledge and experience mm. with clients in your day-to-day? Mm, absolutely. The So I, I tend to work with two types of people, it, high performers in, in business, uh, coaches in business, uh, and elite athletes. And so one of the things that I keep harping on about is that people need to realize, especially in business, that business is the most brutal sport. And business- Why is that? Why is that? Because it's nonstop. You don't rest. You don't, like you have to show up every single day and you don't just show up like at the gym. You can just show up and just put in a, <laughs> a, a lousy workout and you know what there are some days that's that's got value some days that it doesn't have value if we just show up in business that's one thing but depending on what kind of results we want to create right just showing up isn't enough and so if that's not enough and we need to show up as our best version of ourselves then we need to be conditioned we need to be trained we need to be prepared and we need to have the internal state matching what it needs to be to hit the, the results that we want to hit, right? But most people, most business owners don't treat themselves as athletes. They really don't. But if they would get into that mentality, right, what would happen? All of a sudden, an athlete, an athlete just doesn't show up on match day and just hope for the best. But that's what business owners do on sales calls, online, on, with their marketing, with their clients. Oh my gosh, you know how many coaches I've worked with that would show up with the lowest energy, no confidence, no certainty. And as a result, guess what? You don't get results. Your clients don't get results. Why are the clients not putting in the work? Well, show me how you're showing up in life, right? And, and I'm, my biggest fear myth is to be a fraud, to, to not be who I say I am. That's my biggest fear, right? And so in order to outdo that, and, and you asked me about what we do with our clients and I'll tie it in. I know it's like, why is he on another tangent? I'll connect it because in order to transform, okay, there's a couple of things that are required. One is the intensity that as a coach, I see myself as, as a leader, I need to lead my people to, to where they want to go, right? In order to, to, to take them there, I need to be the person that they need me to be in order to get them out of their victim, their, their, their whinging, their excuses, their fears. And in order to do that, they need to have something that feels stronger than what their fears and excuses and victim feels like, right? So the first one is you need to be the fucking person. You need to be who they need you to be. I value strong masculine energy because, listen, for me, that's what I need, right? And in the coaching space, that's, it's close to as dead. Because everyone is just, you know, touchy feely, not, not wanting to upset anyone. No, like I say to people, I'm willing for you to fire me, like fire me right now. But I'm going to tell you what you need to and what no one else is willing to do. Because the issue is not what I'm saying. The issue is that I'm the only one saying what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Now think about what would happen if, if we all had more people that actually cared about ourselves, which is different, right? To everyone saying what we want to hear because they're just trying to protect themselves. I'm past that, right? So that's step one of the transformation. You need someone that is willing to be this, you know, to, 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 to risk themselves being hated because they care. That's one. Number two is we need little things every single day because everyone has been to Tony Robbins events, have been to big conferences. You know, these people, they come out, myth. oh my God, don't they just are ready to take on the world, right? That was me, okay. FYI. Like I did the online thing. So yes, I've been here. Right, right. <laughs> so the, the and, and see, the thing is, those events are freaking incredible. But what's the issue? That two weeks later, you go back to doing what you've always done. Why? Because you don't have accountability and you don't have a process, a mindset method that you can go into every single day that creates, remember, have you ever, do you remember watching The Hitch? 
the movie with Will Smith, right? Weird connection. Yes, actually. I haven't watched I haven't watched many movies, but I have watched that. Okay. You know when he's <laughs> teaching the guy to dance and it's like, hey, this is your dance floor. This is where you live. This is where you live. Do you remember that? Right? So the thing is, we need we need that dance floor. We need that place that we live in that is made of or made up of simple habits, routines, and practices that if we just do those every single day, it's not gonna skyrocket in my might have a J curve for you at some stage, but it's going to increasingly go on an upward trend. And a lot of people you know, boom and go crazy real quick, but easy come, easy what? Easy yeah. go, right? So <laughs> what if we start to put things in place that, okay, it might not have that big crazy, oh, I've just gone and done, got massive results overnight because that can go just as quick but we start building and building and building it and putting brick by brick, brick by brick. Okay. It might not have that crazy, um, you know, false endorphin here. They're thinking that you've made it, but what will happen is that you will never go back because now that becomes who you are. So in the part of transformation, the, the important part, part about this is that we need micro events to happen, to re, uh, reshape, recreate an identities right? Every single day. But then on the other hand, we've got the micro things, but then we also need macro events. I say four times a year, once a quarter to do something that creates a new identity that sparks, that goes, wow, holy shit, what just happened? Right? That can be a conference. That can be a scary challenge. That can be something that puts you completely out of your comfort zone. Because now when you've got the three of a coach with accountability and love, You've got micro events that happen every single day. And then you've got four macro events every year. I mean, I don't know many people that live that kind of life. They would go through the next 12 months and finish 2024 and say, holy shit, I did these four things. And it was wow. Because everyone, everyone goes back and does the same thing all the time. And they never get different results but they don't like the results that they get. Crazy. Yeah. So if we become people that are willing to do that, do you, I truly believe that anyone can have incredible results, like wow results, braggable results, remarkable results. Yeah, that shit will change your life. Like, I mean, I, I'm a coach. I always have a coach or a mentor on the go. That's a non-negotiable for me. And I very much live in the micro. I'm very disciplined and I know that's the small things every day that make the big change over time. And only just hearing you speak now, I'm like, wow, I really have an opportunity here to include more of those macros. As I mentioned before, I have done a Tony Robbins event. I think I actually did it, the online one, maybe February this year. And that was a good pivotal thing for me, but it does fizzle out, right? So the combination of having those big macro Mm. jolts, if you want to level up Mm. and and unlock that next level of performance, Mm. uh, I just haven't heard it framed that way before. So thank you for sharing that. And it gives you, it gives you a perfect platform now because Here's the thing, right? It's a dangerous kind of place when we've got high performers that are saying, because I hear all the time say, hey, I, I do all this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm good with that. But there's still got to be growth, right? And, and if you become comfortable to that level, awesome. Because now we're already at this level. Great. Now we've got to go to the next level and we've got to keep pushing and we've got to be surrounded ourselves by people that continuously uh, 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 lighting the match underneath our ass to 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 step up to the next level. You got a perfect platform. I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to see how you take it to the next level in 24. Awesome. This is brilliant. It's where you want to be. Now it's got to look, figure out what sort of macro events I want to have. Yeah. Like I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is like throw myself out of a plane, but that it sounds like my worst nightmare. Yeah. Um, now I probably should figure out why that's my worst nightmare. Maybe there's but something see, there. But... But see, here's, here's the thing. <laughs> here's, here's the thing, right? I think I think that's really powerful. And and whatever it might be, I think it's 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 between you and you. And the one thing that triggers the shit out of me is coaches that go online and say the mind. It's so powerful. It's like the most powerful thing ever, right? And then they don't do anything to actually show how powerful it actually is, right? And, and you know what? It's scary because it's scary, right? It's, it's like, ah, I feel like shit. So I'm, I'm petrified. It's my worst fear. But this is where 
I mean, think about for you, and I know this is your show, I, wanna, I don't want to take it over this way, but imagine the stories, the impact, the marketing that that could give you. Say, guys, I just documented it. Guys, I'm I'm petrified right now to jump up, but I'm going to do it because I believe in X, Y, Z. Wow, that would be amazing yeah. for your business. That'd be epic. <laughs> Even now, because I'm like, why don't I want to do it? And I was like, okay, there's elements of control, uncertainty, all that sort of stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, you need to do this. Yeah. And notice that <laughs> these, this, so this is, per, I love that you mentioned this because this is exactly what happens with people, right? But anytime we put in one of, so, okay, two things. Tomorrow is December 1st, right? I've given myself a, a challenge, right? To, and I started this in 2021, okay? In 2021, my challenge was to run every single day for 365 days, right? I got to 272 days in a row because I was a little bit silly and I decided to do a bunch of other stuff and I got injured and I couldn't run. So, um, the, so what I'm, I'm, I'm starting the 365 again right? And I'm doing it all over again. But what I'm doing is I'm not waiting until January 1st. This shit's kicking off tomorrow on December 1st. So a time of recording today is November 30th. I don't know when you're going to put it out. Um, but I'm starting it tomorrow and I'm committing to do, uh, to do stuff like this every single day for 300 and I'm documenting it. The reason why I mention it is because when we do things that stretch us and they are scary, all of a sudden we are vulnerable right? And when we're vulnerable, it is the single most valuable time of your growth. Why? Because when you're vulnerable, your ego is fucked off a long time ago, right? It's out of the way. And now what comes up? What, what is left? The ego, it's almost like, you know, those pretty goggles that make everything look good, right? And then when they go and you're like, you see reality, you see what's left. Now you're like in the, in the you know, the second basement floor, in the darkest room in the corner where it's cold, there's mold everywhere, there's shit, and there hasn't been a light shine in that corner for so long, right? But this is where we want to get to. This is ground zero. This is our darkest little dungeon with our deepest shit, right? But it is until we get to that moment that we actually start seeing it. And it's scary. That's why no one goes there, right? Remember being a kid in, in the garage in that room in that the, you don't want to go and the light goes off and you scream, right? That's what it is right? But when you step into your king and your queen and you actually step into the greatest version of you and you go, man, be your greatest version of yourself right now and go and work through that shit. On the other side of that, you become unrecognizable. You, you leap, you go in quantum leaps and people look at you and you're like, who the hell are you? I can't even recognize you. And that is the single sweetest thing that anyone in personal development can hear. I can't even recognize you. Good. I've made it. Right? That yeah. is so powerful. So I I love to see you jump out of a plane. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. Um, and hearing you talk about the, I mean, and this is why I think having a coach is so yeah. important because that shit is scary. Yeah. And that's why I know you mentioned um having a business is probably one of the hardest sports you could play and amen to that. I mean, it sounds so silly, but even when you start your own business, it's it's showing up on social media, even starting this podcast. Yeah. I used to freak out yeah. every time I recorded an episode. And and then to your point, you start stretching the muscles and you keep doing repetition, yeah. repetition. Yeah. Now you just, I love this shit. I didn't think I could love it as much as I do, but it's just the commitment to showing up every day yeah. and that sort of stuff. And so I'm interested to hear, obviously it takes a particular person to transform i mean otherwise everyone would be doing it how would someone know that they're ready to transform and to level up what do they need to be doing i mean i have um people who come into my world and, and you you think they're kind of ready but they're like oh no i i don't believe that i'm responsible for my outcomes or mm. they're playing a bit mm. how would you know someone's like fuck yeah you're ready to transform and level up mm. i would actually th i actually believe that everyone's capable of it so it's not, it's yep. not a, it's not a question of being capable of it or not. Maybe the question is, do you really want it? Do you really want to change? Yep. Do you really, and, and see sometimes that, that comes down to, to, you know, to us as coaches and there's got to, I believe that the, the first thing I don't help anyone myth that doesn't want to change. Right. Because 
then I'm, we're wasting time. If you don't, if you don't want something for you, I'm not your guy, right? I don't think anyone is your guy. You gotta, you gotta want to change, right? Now, the second layer to that is, are you willing to let go what you have now for the promise? To, to the, for, and what I mean by promise, for, for, for what's possible, right? And because we, we can't become something by staying who we are. We can't go somewhere without leaving where we were. Makes sense, right? You can't go to, to LA without leaving Canberra, right? You, you've got to physically move to go from one. And it takes, you know, the choice, the, the decision. It takes continuous choice making. It takes faith. It takes trust. It takes belief. It takes all the internal stuff. So um, everyone has got the ability because if someone does it, if, if one person that you know has done it, then you know that you can do it too because they're no, no, they're no different from us. They're no special. That's why when, when you look out business-wise, oh, wow, that person has built their business to that, to that level. I'm like, that means I can do it too. See, it's as simple as, what, as that, black and white, right? I can do it too. So now who do I need to be in order to, to have what he has or she has? Simple as that. There's not emotional, right? We like to make it emotional. I like to make shit emotional, but it's less emotional than that. It's like, okay, you, you have that. Do I like it? Do I want some of that? Yeah, I do. So if at some stage I've wanted that, then when, when the future thing of doubt and insecurity and all the other shit comes in, I need to go back and remember that I actually wanted that. And why do I actually want that? Because of this, this, and this. Okay, cool. So now I need to just do the things that they've done and be the person that I need to be in order to have what they have. Does this make sense? Is this in, uh, yeah. again, tangent again? I'm not sure if I answer your question. No, it 100% does. And I think I want to bold and underline everyone has the ability to transform. Of course. If you don't think you're someone who can change, it's like we have evidence that change happens every fucking day. If you, you're not the same person you were yesterday, yeah. a couple of years ago, all that sort of stuff, you can change. The question, the better question is, do you want to? Yeah. And not everyone needs to change. Mm. If you're living a perfectly happy life, if you're comfortable, comfort is a whole different thing. I'm sure we can talk about that. But some people are really good and perfectly fine yeah. as being comfortable. Yeah. And there's a segment of the population who don't want that, who want more, who want to explore what they're capable of, they're the people we're talking yeah, to. Yeah, 100%. And it goes back to sort of that growth eccentric experience. If if you have that pull inside of you of more, then this is for you, right? If you, listen, if you have 10 out of 10 body, 10 out of 10 money, 10 out of 10 business, 10 out of 10 relationship with your kids, 10 out of 10 health, 10 out of 10 relationship with your husband, wife, cat, dog, you know, rabbit, whoever you've got in your life that you cuddle, right? Um, then, hey, maybe this isn't, this isn't for you, right? We could ask the question of, well, are you fulfilled? Are you happy, right? But let's say you're 10 yeah. out of 10 happy. For I mean, great. Teach me. Tell me. Tell me how you do it, right? Maybe, maybe you should then move into the, the stage of, you know, helping other people doing it. And again, if you're 10 out of 10 with that too, then please write every single book on it uh, possible. Yeah, reach out. I'd love yeah. to chat with you. Yeah. But I think to your point too, I mean, 10 out of 10 success on paper is def different to me than 10 out of 10 fulfillment. And that's where my passion really lies is I've, I've done on paper some things that I'm like, oh yeah, people want to achieve that sort of stuff. But was I happy? Fuck no. And what's the point if you're not happy? Yeah. And so I'm interested to see what role fulfillment plays in your way of transformation as well. I'm assuming that that plays a critical role just from what you're talking Huge. about, the inside out work. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, um, it's, it's a, it's, it's a real big trap, right? To a lot of people, uh, we mean, we've been conditioned to, and I've got nothing against, I'm going to say w hard work and, and thinking that that's where we're going to find it. it. I've got nothing against hard work. I actually think that we, we need purpose and the work. But it's more, I think for me, it comes down to enjoying. And as a, as a, as a man, as a dad, as a husband, um, it's, I, I tend to, my tendency, and I'm very open and upfront with all my problems. So I, I, I know them very well and I talk about them all the time. For me, it's, it's, it's that, not balance, but that gratitude and that enjoyment of the process. I tend to just get 
so excited about what I do that I'm just so intense about stuff that sometimes I forget that gratitude and that enjoyment. But it's through those two things uh, that I found the answer to being able to perform even better, push even more. And when you enjoy it, it changes everything because you can be doing the most like tedious of task, right? You, you it might be up at 4 a.m. doing things that you need to get done for the day because you, you're chasing your dream, you, you're on purpose and whatever. And sometimes you, we all get those moments where it's just like, it's a drag. But if we choose to enjoy the moments, enjoy the fact that, hey, this is difficult today. This is a test. Um, you know, enjoy that. I set myself a challenge of doing 140 burpees every day. This morning, I hated them. I hated it started. I was just walking around like, yeah. but I'm like, you know what? Enjoy this. You get to have this. You have the opportunity to do these. It's, and I was asked by someone else around, you know, burnout. How do you avoid burnout? And my, mm -hmm. my answer was enjoyment to actually enjoy mm -hmm. the little micro things, right? Because if I enjoy it and I actually have fun with the things that I do and I'm grateful moment by moment, which again, I, it's, it's a challenge for me. It's something that I have to work on and be conscious of every day. And I'm doing much better than I, than I have been. But then do I have to burn out? Will I burn out if I'm just enjoying myself more? What do I have to burn out from? Right? Because, I, because I'm having fun. I'm on purpose. I'm working towards my goal. I'm smiling. I'm having fun. I'm intense. I get to, you know, even if I'm angry, even if I'm, intense even if i'm grinding even if i'm lifting weight whatever it might be you can still enjoy that you can still be full masculine aggressive calling out a client for being just a little bitch and still enjoy that does that make sense yeah and i mean i can definitely resonate with this journey i mean i have four different jobs or hats that i wear and people are like oh my god you must be so busy and burnt out and i was like sure my days are long but i can enjoy all of it mm. it energizes yes. me all of this stuff my biggest challenge is how can I fit more so I can prioritize everything that's important to me, but hundred yeah. percent simply by doing things that from a place of enjoyment yeah. that connected to your values, stuff that you enjoy. I find that my relationship with burnout is pretty much non-existent mm. to where it was mm. a number of years ago. Do, do you, do yeah. you think that the burnout when you're on purpose that you can get burnt out? I don't, that's a really great question. I would say my first reaction is if my priorities aren't balanced. So like if I was on purpose in, in my career and I was neglecting family or something like that, I would probably be more concerned about the, the negative impact elsewhere. I, I feel like it might be similar to you when I'm on purpose, I'm like in flow, I'm on fire. Like I could not sleep for days and nights if I'm really into something. Um, but I know that's not going to be beneficial to Long the time. other areas of my life. I'm re yeah, I'm really about uh, living uh, uh, fulfilling life holistically, yeah, not yeah. in just one area. So I'd probably burnout's probably not the term I'd probably use. It's probably imbalanced yeah, yeah, in yeah. other areas. I don't like yeah. life yeah, balance. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole other thing. I don't think we ever achieve full balance, yeah. but yeah. Integration is a much yeah. better word for that too. Right? There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Integration. Yeah. 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 What, what's your thoughts? Yeah. What, what's I, your I thoughts around much, that? I, honestly, I feel most alive when I'm, when my schedule is full, when I'm working towards the things yeah. that, the, the Obviously, are on purpose. And you know what? I'm going to tie money into this because for so long, I chased money as the thing, right? And money holds incredibly high value. It's really important. Money is really important in my life, right? But do you know when I felt most alive? It wasn't when I had the most money in my bank account. It was actually when I was doing the work that I enjoyed the most. When I was, when I was busy, when my schedule was full when it was probably too full. That's when I actually felt yeah. most alive, right? And so people are scared of the hard work. I was scared of the hard work, but I'm like, man, I want to do more of this shit that makes me feel alive. I want to do more of it. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm up at four. I, I have late days. I've got two kids. Life is really full on. I keep myself in great physical shape. I want to make sure that my relationship is 10 out of 10. But I like being busy. I like being yeah. purple. I love having shit to do, right? And, and people are like, oh, you should take some days off. Why? 
well, I'd be fain them doing the shit that I do all my days on because I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, the, the <laughs> thing is, like, I, I don't know about you. I love working Saturday, Sunday. It's probably some of my favorite times. I have also developed a, a good ability to switch off. But I think these are yeah. two different things that people struggle with. Yes. So, um, hey, how do we get talking about this? This is good. I just, sorry, I took <laughs> over your show. I didn't mean to. No, no, I really love, I wanted to circle back on the subject of hard work and even just hearing you speak right now, I'm not afraid of hard work, but I'm afraid of, not afraid, but I'm unwilling and reluctant to work hard at shit I don't care about mm. or stuff that I know it just feels like busy work. Mm. Like it's not on purpose. Mm. And so, I mean, there's elements of everything we do that we might not particularly enjoy. So yeah. definitely mindset's one thing, yeah. but I'll dig my heels in at working hard at something that I don't really see the purpose yeah. of or the impact of. Yeah. Yeah. And so, What's your so thoughts on you, that? For you for that, is that, does that have to do with, um, I mean, when we talk about on purpose, maybe we can define it and say, is, is that shit that you don't see valuable not bringing you closer to you to the ultimate goal that you have? Yeah. So if it's, for example, if it's a task that I just go, I don't see where this is going to end up. I actually don't see this as being helpful. So yeah. I really love achieving things yeah. and I can get stuck into traps where I start ticking boxes and you can work really hard at oh, ticking yes. boxes. And so sometimes I'll start digging my heels in when I'm like, oh, I'm doing that thing again, where I'm unresourcefully hitting my need for achievement by ticking boxes. Like you, you burn That's out that way. Awareness. <laughs> and, and to anyone that, that is listening to that, that is, that is really great awareness. And I, it's, it's really good. The, the you know, clarity is so important to know exactly where we want to go, what we want to do and what, what's really required. Um, I like working hard at the things that I know are going to make the most impact, right? Mm. Like I always say, there's only a handful of things that we need to do in our business every day. Do those to, to the cows come home and eventually you, you achieve the results, right? So as long as, as long as it has high value, right? And it, brings you closer and sometimes it can have a high value but then have a a longer term return yeah, yeah. And, and, and i'll say that's transformation right mm. because transformation is hard work and it might not be immediate to your point there's a lot of the micro in there yeah. and it's going to be for a long-term yeah. thing and we don't and we don't see the results um next week the week after the week after that week after that which again this is one of the greatest things that business teaches us right in fitness, I know you. I know you. You're into your fitness. It's very similar to fitness. Why? Because we go to the gym, we start doing all this stuff, and holy shit, I still got my love handles. Why? I'm doing the stuff, right? How long have you been doing it? Oh, I'm, I'm on day three. Well, right. That's not really gonna. It's just not gonna show you the result. I believe that we pick up. We we so the first four weeks are just dues that you need to pay business. Uh, fitness, life, relationship, whatever, right? Then in the second, in the second uh, block of four weeks, that's the work that you put in, and then you start to collect at the end of week eight the work of of week one. Does that make sense? So yeah, there is this. If you look at manifestation, if anyone's into manifestation, it takes on average between six to eight weeks for us to start to see what we visualized on day one, right? We start to see day one in, in between week six to eight, and then week two in week seven to nine and week three, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on, right? It takes time because there's a, there's a time delay process, right? Yeah. To, to all of it. And, and again, when, when we're used to working, I don't know what the demographic of the people that, you know, listen to, to this great show, uh, if it's people in nine to fives, right? We're used to, Hey. Go in, sign in, you get paid at the end of the week. Or next Wednesday, you know you're getting paid. Business isn't like that. Life isn't like that. Fitness isn't like that. Relationships isn't like that. Sometimes you have to give, 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 give so much. And then you get a little bit back and you're like, fuck, something's wrong. I'm not doing this anymore. Screw it. Right? So you need to have a long view. You need to understand things like compound interest. You need to understand how... Everything that goes in comes back, but not in the time frame or in the quantity that you think. But at the same time, yeah. when it really kicks in, what you get back, it's not in, in the amounts that you were thinking. It's going to be way, 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 way more. Yeah, because you spent all that time building that foundation and, and even hearing you just talk to that, I think 
there's so many structures in society who have taught us to be comfortable and and guarantee certainty when you talk about regular salary and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And there's and growth isn't certain. And I think anyone who is getting that little niggle or wants to do something better or explore what their potential is, you've got to start embracing hard work because it is hard mm. work. It's going to be uh, maybe easy for the first four weeks. I, I liked how you um, phrased that. I think it's really easy to get excited and ride the momentum of that new start for the first four weeks. After that, shit starts getting hard and you start not wanting to show up and you yeah. start going, why am I doing this? And so you really need to anchor into the, what's important to you and all that sort of stuff. And so I'd be curious to hear what other mistakes, or mistakes might not be the right word, but let's roll with that. Do people make on a transformation journey. So they might go, oh, it's going to be easy or I'll see results right away. What else, what are other misconceptions or mistakes would you say people make about transformation? Mm. I like that question. Do you mind if I answer that question to, or kind of shift that question to the mistakes that I've made? Would you mind if I did that? Yeah, great. Um, Of course. So the mistakes that I made into, in, in the transformation process one of them, and in no particular order, this is just as they're going to, as, as they come. The first one is just a lack of consistency. It's just do something, think you're going to get a big result. And when you don't, it doesn't come in, in the time frame that you, you know, stomp your feet like a five-year-old, oh, I just want to, and you get into the little, you know, victim uh, mindset and then you, you quit. That's cost me a lot, inconsistency. One of the skills, one of the identities is that if I were to start all over again, develop today and I double down is discipline and consistency. Uh, number two is, uh, number two around the mistakes of transformation is seeking the easy fix instead of focusing on mastery. That that's cost me a lot. And I see that in the coaching industry all the time every every coach out there is just looking for the easy fix i'm able i'm I'm grateful that it, it's cost me a lot early on but i was able to to focus on it and 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 really kind of choose a mindset mastery um or mastery mindset i should say uh that was one and and, and to me that there was a lack of patience and i just want it straight away i want it straight away so easy fix give me right now i want to make the money now right instead of saying hey Become the fucking guy. Just become the guy, right? Become the guy that is that is a beast at sales. Become the guy that is mastered marketing and influence and communication and 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 negotiation and all that kind of stuff. All the stuff that is going to get you the results. So that's the second one. Um, the the third mistake that I made was probably letting the ego in, thinking oh, I just don't, I don't need I don't need to do. That. I've made it, right? And then, because ultimately what that does, it makes you think that you're better than what you what you actually are. And although I'm the first person to tell you that you you are better than what you fucking think you are, but all, and that you're not less than anyone else, that is married to the principle of no days off, do the heart mm-hmm. every single day, even especially when you think you don't need it, because that's when you're most vulnerable. That's when you, you've got blind spots, right? Another, another one is, uh, another mistake was just to think I, I could do it alone, right? That I could go at it alone and uh, I'm just, you know what? I just want to earn it myself and I want to I wanna just do it myself and prove it's the stupidest fucking thing that you can do because it, it's, it's so egotistical to, for you to think that you can go somewhere on your own. Think about it. If you could, you'd be there already. If you could do it on your own, it w- this wouldn't be what we're talking about. And and part of that is is unfortunately connected to to people's fear around money and lack around money, right? Because like, oh, I don't want to spend the money to do this. Let's be honest. That's what it is. That's what it's about. Um, and it's the the biggest mistake to not actually invest mm-hmm. the money to go to that next level. It's another mistake that I did early on that I rectified was to to not do something because of money, because it was a lot of money, so I didn't do it. Oh, I just I, I'm it's too much. I'm not going to do it. And transforming that into how can I? How can I afford this? What can I do to to make that money to make it happen? 
if I if I really fucking want it, I'm going for it. I'm going to find a way to do it. I don't know how. I don't know where the money's going to come from, but I'm I'm going to find a way. So those those are probably the the mistakes that I've I made uh, in in my journey. I'm sure that I'm sure there's more for sure, and it also happens to be very similar to the mistakes I see a lot of people making. Ah, uh, hundred percent. I'm looking at them going, "Yep, done that one and and that and yep." All of them. I think they're quite universal. And so you've shared the mistakes and oof, they're very powerful ones to learn. And I'm grateful that you've shared those mistakes so that the listeners can learn from them. What's one thing that the listener sitting here can do who's going, fuck it, I'm ready for my transformation, like it's go time. What's one thing that they can do in the next 24 to 48 hours to start that journey? Mm. Mm. Here's what I would do. I would do, I would do three simple things. Okay. I would wake up tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. And I would, the first thing that I would say is thank you. And then I would say universe life, rabbit, old lady's foot, whatever you, your thing is that you believe in. Say, hey, I'm, I'm open and ready for things to start going my way. And, and I just ask you, just send me a message. Send me a message in the physical world today because I'm ready for it. Right. That's the first thing that I would do. Then I would do, I would do a, a meditation visualize, get out of the state that we're in all the time throughout the day. I would meditate every three hours, every single day, just five minutes, nothing crazy. Okay. Don't become a monk in Tibet. You don't need to do that. Just do, just do like three mi uh, five minutes every three hours. Okay. Then I would move your body every single day. I would do, I would keep your word. I would do what I say. I would, I, I would do what I say I'm going to do and keep that promise. And then finally, I would do, I would get clear around what I actually want. And I would have drum up all the courage that I can, that I can find and actually write down what I actually want, which is different from what I think I can get. Right. And, and as I write down the things that I, that I want and I find the courage to write it down, you will begin to see your life change. Right, so put good things out there into the universe. Speak, have the courage to verbalize. Just that, hey, you you want stuff, right? You want your business to grow. So say, say, I'm ready for my business to grow. I'm ready for abundance. I'm ready to find uh, a partner. I'm ready to lose weight. I'm ready to whatever it is that you want right now. Right. Second thing is move your body. Get feel good in your body. Right. Um. Give yourself a commitment. Say, hey, I'm going to do this every single day. I'm going to do three push-ups every single day for the next 365 days. And then do it. And then hit it every single day and feel proud of yourself, right? And then get clear around what you want. Write it down. And what I would recommend with that is write it down. And then as you write it, say, hey, um, I want more of this. Realize that you probably have what you want already in your life, but you just want more of it, right? Say, I want more of, of the feeling of confidence, of feeling sexy, feeling powerful, feeling abundant. I want more of it. And then go into what I call a thank you frame, which is basically, thank you that I already have it. Thank you that, oh my gosh, I love feeling like this. I love the feeling of having blah, 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 whatever it might be. You do those simple little three things, it'll change your life. I feel like we could do a whole another episode on like manifestation for performance. Oh, so on. leave that one come with on me. Now. Let's see it. <laughs> that in <laughs> They're incredible tips. Thank you so much. And if someone is wanting to learn more about you and the work that you do, where can they find you? Yeah, for sure. Um, you can find me on on Instagram at the Kingmaker Coaching. But I'll I'll to a one condition, okay? That reach out, shoot me a DM, and say hello, right? That that you heard of me on this great podcast, right? And how kick ass, you know, myth is. But 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 then before you believe anything that I say, watch what I do. I'm kicking off my, my Kingmaker 365 tomorrow and I'm going to document it. And Myth, I have to be honest, it's 50-50 whether I can go through this shit and get it, get it to the end, right? But that's what makes it exciting. And so, mm. um, you know, before anyone believes anything that I say, just watch what I do. And, and if it's, it can help, amazing. I love what you said, but the, you got a 50-50 that this might work out, it might not. And it's exciting that because a lot of people go, oh shit, that's scary. I don't know if I want to do it. 
that's the difference. That's why you're getting the results that you're getting mm. and why other people aren't getting the results that you're getting. I think that that mindset, that approach just mm. speaks well to it. So no doubt people will see more of that on your Instagram. Yeah, sure. I'll make sure I put the links in the show notes below. But thank you so much, Carlo, for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I had a blast. I appreciate the pep talks. <laughs> Can't wait to see you jumping out of a plane. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining me today for another episode of the Actually You Can podcast. I so enjoy having you here and I hope you've taken away powerful insights and tools that will support you to achieve your high level results. Now, before you go apply all of this wisdom in your life, I'd be so grateful if you are able to leave us a podcast review on the platform that you're listening to or share this episode with a friend. Your support means that we can help more self-led, high-performing individuals just like you expand what's possible for them. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. So please go on and shoot me a note on socials and let me know what you think. You can find me on Instagram at Miff Galloway. Now, go ahead and make those dreams a reality because actually you can.